Welcome to the SharePoint Patterns and Practices webcast. And this time we're looking into how to use the Microsoft Craft client to connect to Microsoft Craft from SharePoint Framework. And this is a class which is available from you, uh, for you to use in your SharePoint Framework to kind of easily access the information uh, from a Microsoft Craft APIs. My name is Sasa Yuvonen. I'm a Senior Program Manager from uh, SharePoint Engineering. And with me today uh, is Waldek, responsible of the demo and uh, obviously participating on the discussion. So Waldek, will you do the quick intros as well? Of course. Hi, everybody. My name is Valdek Mastikas. I am Product Manager at Rancor, and I am also an Office Development MVP. Excellent. Thank you, Waldek. So the Microsoft Craft Client is something which is available, like I said, from a SharePoint framework to easily access the REST APIs of Microsoft Craft. Now, in the SharePoint framework or in the SharePoint Online, we can't really uh, give immediate access to all of the Microsoft Craft uh, scopes without uh, the tenant administrative approval. So there are certain things what you need to consider when you are implementing uh, your customizations or solution uh, with the Microsoft Graph. And we'll walk through these steps uh, and we'll demonstrate this uh, in practice as well so you know uh, what has to happen. So how do I actually use the Microsoft Cloud uh, client within the SharePoint framework solution. So obviously we'll write the code first, uh, which is using the Microsoft Cloud client to access the Craft APIs. Um, and in this case, basically adding, for example, accessing your, let's say events or calendar or uh, calendar events or e emails, for example, underneath your profile. Now, to be able to access that information, you your solution needs to access uh, request permissions to access those scopes. So when you are running in the context of SharePoint Online, you do not have access on all of the Microsoft Craft uh, scopes of the particular user, because that would be kind of a violation on the security or potential violation on security. So we want to have this additional control for tenant administrators. So you as a developer, you define what are the needed scopes, what are the, the permissions or what are the endpoints in the Craft APIs, which you're hitting in the package uh, solution uh, JSON file. Whenever you are then uploading or the tenant administrator or the app catalog manager is uploading the SPPKG file, essentially the solution file to the app catalog, the, there will be then a UI which is telling, hey, this solution does require additional permissions to be approved. Uh, so it contains additional permission considerations. And those permissions can be then approved by using the SharePoint Online Management Shell, basically SharePoint Online uh, Admin PowerShell, or the modern admin UI. So you can actually see then uh, what are the pending requests for additional scopes uh, in a Microsoft Craft for additional permissions uh, for third-party APIs, because the UIs are exactly the same uh, for those things. But in this case, let's concentrate on the Craft. Uh, there is also a community and Office 365 CLI, which can be used for managing these permissions and these requests uh, in a tenant. Now, whenever the administrator has then approved permissions, these permissions, um, then your code can actually uh, hit those endpoints um, and it will get the access tokens to hit the additional uh, REST APIs. And then you can confirm basically that everything is working fine. Um, did I miss anything, Waldek, on this one? Um, no, absolutely not. You have everything in there. <laughs> Excellent. It's cool. Uh, so now, uh, there's certain considerations around this uh, of when we are using the Microsoft Craft Client. So there is no pre-approved permission scopes for Microsoft Craft Client. So if you start from a clean tenant and you haven't actually granted any permissions as a tenant administrator or nobody has uh, requested any additional permissions uh, before, there is no permissions for Microsoft Craft Client. There's none. So you don't actually have a basic set of, uh, there's no default set of permissions or scopes to be available. So you will need to have a tenant administration permission to approve additional scopes. And this is um, pretty high permissions, but again, this really comes down on the fact that the random code, well, it's not a random code, but SharePoint Framework Solution need to be controlled on the APIs and information what it can access. So you need to have that administrative permission to grant additional uh, access on these uh, APIs. Now, whenever you're granting these permissions using the PowerShell or using the admin UI or using the Office 365 CLI, it's really important to realize that when you grant the permissions to Microsoft Graph Client, it actually applies all of the scripts running in that tenant. 
So any SharePoint framework solution, which is running in that tenant, is getting the same permissions as well. So if you have an, another solution which is getting in, uh, which is not requesting those permissions, but is using the Microsoft Graph client and hitting those endpoints, it will actually work. So this is not granting solution per permission, it's around granting in a tenant level what are the scopes in the Microsoft Graph which is valid to be used in a SharePoint framework solution. Super, super important uh, thing to remember. And also the final thing at the time of the, this webcast uh, is recorded, this is still in preview, uh, so it is subject to change. So if you see some changes on the, on the demo or in the material comparing to the written material and this video, that is because it was still in preview when this webcast was recorded. Anything what I'm missing here, uh, Waldo? Um, I would stress one more thing, the important part that permissions that you request inside a package are not a manifest in the same way permissions requested are in, for example, an add-in, right? So if, if you think about an add-in, add-in can only perform operations requested in permissions, right? True. Here, you, request does not relate to code in any way. You can request one set and you can perform other operations. So they are disconnected and the permissions you request do not constrain the code you actually run in production. So that's True. important part for you to keep in mind that permission requests do not constrain the code you actually run. Absolutely, absolutely, and and we'll come up. Uh, we'll absolutely have another, let's say, more deep dive uh, session around what does that mean from a tenant admin perspective, uh, so you'll understand the details behind of it. In this one, we really wanted to concentrate on how to get started on the on the using the Microsoft Graph, uh, and not spend too much time on on dwelling on let's say administrative or governance details. We'll we'll come up with another one on that one. Now. So how do we actually use the Microsoft Craft client uh, in practice? So let's have a live demo uh, from Waldex computer. Uh, so how do we use the Microsoft Craft client um, to gain access on, in quotes, additional Microsoft Craft scopes uh, in a SharePoint framework uh, solution? So how would I use this thing in practice? What is the op administrative operations to be performed? And uh, how does the code, how can we verify that the code is working properly? So let's jump to the demo and we'll come up back on the slides when the demo is completed. All right, so let's have a look how you can use the MS Graph client in code. First thing you have to do is to, you have to import it in project. So that's the line here. We import the MS Graph client from at Microsoft slash SP client preview. And as you can see, it is still in preview when we now record it. But when you watch it, it might have changed. So always check, double check the docs. What is the exact package name where to load it from? That gives you the access to the client and its types. But then actually to load the instance, you load it from a service scope within the context of web part or, or extensions you're working with. And so in other words, that's been already, or there is already instance of the graph client available for you to use, and you don't need to create one by yourself. To access it, you have to use the MS graph client dot service key, which instructs framework which service to load from the available scope. So you, so, so using that, this key, it will know what to give you back. Once you have the client, you can basically use the Fluent API of, of, of the Microsoft Graph uh, um, SDK that, that you use here to call out the API and the endpoint you want to use. In our case, we will try to load uh, my events. So that's, that, that, that's why we call me events. And at that point, we issue a get call and then use a promise to get the data. Right, so so at that point, when you have the client that's basically working with the Microsoft Graph uh, SDK, um, and that's basically it from the code point of 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 view. And the next thing on, is quickly that, on that one, let's yep. be super 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 clear. The me slash events uh, is not available by default in any of the let's say correct old access token uh, or old locations. So by default, that if you try to use this without granting any permissions, you would get an exception, right? Yes, it, it would fail. So so basically you would get unauthorized, right? Because yes. you wouldn't get a token for this and you would not be able to access this info. Yes. So you will be, so this code will only work if the tenant on which you run it 
has approved access to, to, to calendars using the Microsoft Graph. Yes. And this is actually a nice segue to our next part, because when, when you build this code, you also have to request permissions to access it. And you can do it through the package solution JSON file. In there, there's a separate property that, 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 that you use named web API per, 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 mission requests. And in there, you have an array of requests of, of, of basically per, per, per missions that your solutions, your solution needs. So, for example, here, you can see that we request access to Microsoft Graph Calendars Read. Uh, you could also add uh, things like uh, an, um, another one. Imagine that you need to have access to emails. So you would say mail read, right, and so on. So in here, you, you basically list permissions that your solutions need to have access to in order for it to work. Right. Once this is in, in in place, the last step left is to actually build solution, package it, de de deploy it to SharePoint, and in there approve the request. So let's do that. Let's open the ter terminal, and here we will call gulp bundle ship and gulp package solution ship at once. So we'll do it in one step. We will instruct Gulp to um, build build the project, build the code, package it in one go, and that will give us a .spkg file that we can then deploy to SharePoint. All right, so this is done. Let's switch to our site, which is here, and this is the catalog, and here is also our app. So now let's deploy this spkg to catalog, basically a drag and drop. Let's move that aside. And here are important part. Uh, so first of all, we can choose whether we want to deploy it globally or not, which, which, which is the part here. But then important part is here. So this text here, this string here, instructs us that this solution has permission requests in it. So tenant admin deploying it can actually see what additional permissions that solution needs and can then decide either to to approve them or not. And and this can be done through the tenant admin page. So let's deploy it. And then if we switch, switch here, uh, you want me to go from, from the start on this one to show how it works, works Vesa? Yep. How you access yep. this? Yeah, yeah, ab yeah. absolutely. Uh, yeah, so first, uh, this is the, the, the page you land. So here, here we go to the tenant admin side. And in here, there's the link to the new preview, a uh, new UI. Yeah. And from here, there's the link named API ma 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 management. And in here, you can see now a new request for additional access to um, uh, graph. And as you can see, by default, there is nothing approved here uh First, right? So if we would first try to run, run the web part that we've built, it wouldn't work, right? Because no permissions have been assigned yet. So here, well, when we have a request, we, we, we can select it and then we can approve or reject. And to do this, you have to be tenant admin because that applies to every single script in your tenant, which is why it's important, right? Why, which is why you actually have to be tenant admin. And that also, uh, is being also called out out here, right? So all apps, custom scripts, and web parts in all size site collections across the whole tenant will have access to this scope. So we approve it. And that's a super, 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 super important thing to now realize, right? Correct. So it's yes. not about yeah. solution approving permissions for specific solution. It's about approving permissions for all of the SharePoint framework solutions. Yes, correct. All right. So with that approved, we can now switch to the workbench. And here, let me re reload it. Yeah, but first, let me start it actually debugging it locally. That's, that's a good reminder. So. <laughs> Go, gulp serve no browser. Actually, we have deployed it, so we would not need to uh, to run it. Gulp serve no server serve. Yeah, typical type of what I do all the time as well. Yeah. <laughs> server, what? All right, so this is available here. We go back to our browser. And in here, 
refresh, correct, and now we'll be able to see it. Let's switch to the network tab in here, move it up and down a bit, and here we look for ev events. So we build a web parts called, called My Events, and that will use the Microsoft Graph to load events from iCalendar. And in here, we can already see that there's a call to the Microsoft Graph, so graph.microsoft.com dash v10 dash me dash events. And the dash me events, that's exactly the call that we had in our code. And if we open that, we, we can see already that it's been a 200 OK call. So it is approved, it is correct, and in here we can see all of the events that I have in calendar. So this works because tenant admin granted permissions for scripts and web parts to access the Microsoft Graph calendars. Or to, yes, to access the Microsoft Graph calendars, yes. Yeah. Correct. And, and now, obviously, the tenant administrator has a permissions and they can manage the, 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 uh, the crans afterwards as well. So if needed, the tenant administrator can go using UI or PowerShell or the Office 365 CLI and remove that permission, which would mean that this web part would then no longer work. So you can manage those scopes um, as, uh, well, any time you want as needed. Correct. Cool. I think that's it for this demo. Anything what we you were planning to still go slightly deeper? I think that's no. It. Yeah. Yes, that, that's it. Excellent. So thank you, Waldek, for this one. Let's flip back on the slides and close up the webcast. Excellent. Thank you, Waldek, uh, one more time on the demo. So. That was really a, a kind of a simple and, and simplistic walkthrough on how can we use the Microsoft Graph client um, and what is the process of granting additional scopes and additional permissions uh, for the uh, for these custom applications in your Office 365 tenant. Um, like I said uh, before the demo as well, we'll, we'll, we will definitely uh, release additional documentation and guidance and considerations for the governance side of the story and what does it mean in practice. In this one, we wanted to really concentrate on how do, what is the basic setup of getting started and what is the basic flow of granting additional permissions. Anything what we're missing here and what you would like to reiterate, Waldek? Absolutely not. I would uh, encourage every, uh, um, everybody to give it a try and let us know what you think. Would it be a thing that you can uh, use in your solutions or is there anything that's missing and or should be changed? Absolutely, absolutely. Please keep on the feedback coming, um, regardless when you are watching the video, if the capability is already GA'd or not, uh, please keep the feedback coming using our social media and GitHub channel. So we in Microsoft uh, in the SharePoint Engineering will know what needs to be adjusted uh, to further uh, hit your requirements and further make sure that you'll be happy on, on implementing stuff on top of the SharePoint and what do you need on top of the SharePoint. But thank you everybody for watching. Thank you for your uh, participation and your feedback already advanced. We'll come up with a new webcast sooner or later. Thank you. Mm -hmm.